going to describe how to wire up a, a central heating system. The one we're looking at today is an S-plan. An S-plan would consist of two two-port valves. Both of them are sprung-loaded so that when they've got current to them, they'll open and when the current disappears, they'll close. Obviously, we've got a programmer. We've got a cylinder thermostat, a central heating thermostat, a boiler and a pump. We need to know how to wire it up so that it works properly. Um, I've missed some of the terminals on the, on the programmer. I've only put the ones in that we're, we're going to use plus the off ones, but you know, all programmers look slightly different, but the wiring system remains exactly the same. First of all, we need a live supply. In this demonstration, I'm not going to draw in the earths because we'll end up with so many wires it will become just a fog. And probably I won't draw the neutrals in until the very last thing because obviously the more wires I'm drawing on the board, the more difficult it becomes to see what's going on. So first of all, I'm going to start drawing the line conductors in. So we've got ourselves a wiring sensor here, which has got a number of terminals in it. And I start off by wiring a line to my wiring sensor. Now you can see that I've looped some of the terminals together. I've put links in because I'm going to end up with a lot of cables coming to here. Rather than them all going into one terminal, it's going to be much easier just to put separate terminals for when I can put two or three cables in each one. I need to look now at the system and see which other parts of that system require a permanent live. Well, fairly obviously, the programmer does because the programmer is a time clock and the time clock needs power 24 hours a day. So I'll run a permanent live to the time clock. And if I look down here, my boiler usually would have a permanent live because when it's not cooling for heat, let's just say that everything is, is reached temperature and the boiler shut down, we don't want the pump to stop running immediately. We need the pump to, to dissipate the heat within the boiler. So it's not unusual to have the pump on a circuit just running so that for a short time it clears the heat out of the boiler. So for that we would need a permanent live to the boiler. That's our permanent life to the boiler. Okay, so let's just say then that we're switching the system on and the first thing we want to do is call for hot water. So I turn the programmer on. The programmer now calls for hot water. It sends a signal to the common of the cylinder stack. The cylinder stat is cooling for heat, so obviously the on terminal now becomes live. When the on terminal is live, we need to send a signal to the hot water valve, connect it to the brown. So now we can see program is cooling for heat. The current flows through to the cylinder stat. The cylinder stat is in the on position. These two are closed. It sends a signal back up through to the hot water two port valve. The two port valve now opens and it makes the micro switch within the valve. And now I need a wire from the orange because this is going to be the one that turns on the boiler and the, the pump and I need another wire to the grey because the grey obviously is going to be the live that supplies the micro switch. So at that point, I can come, if I want to, I can come from a permanent live, connect it to the grey. From the orange, down to the switch line of the boiler, and from the switch line of the boiler to the line of the pump. 
Very often the pump is contained within the boiler, so that's a connection that possibly you wouldn't need to make yourself. So now what we've got is a situation where cooling for hot water, cylinder stat is made, the micro switch is, is closed because the valve is now opened, micro switch closed, sends a live down to the boiler, the boiler starts up, starts the pump running, and we've now got hot water flowing through the system. Of course, if I turn this off, the valve now, because it's spring-loaded, goes back to its closed position, which would then open the micro switch. The signal to the boiler would stop. Because there's a permanent live, if it was needed to, this pump would continue, but that is an electronic device within the boiler, which we don't generally need to worry about. If we look at the central heating now, central heating's called for, so send a signal to my wiring centre. From the wiring centre to the common of my thermostat, Thermostat's calling for heat. Sends a signal back up to my central heating. Two port valve. The two port valve now opens. I've got a permanent life to the gray here as well. When the two port valve opens, it closes the micro switch to the orange. The orange now sends a signal down to the boiler, which of course then sends a signal to the pump and everything works as it should do. Central heating is satisfied. Switch opens. Two port valve closes because it's spring loaded. Micro switch now opens, shuts off the supply to the boiler. Permanent live will ensure that the pump keeps running if it needs to. There we have a central heating system. The only one thing I should point out is that within a central heating a thermostat, we have what we call a neutral bias or an anticipator, which is a little heater which is inside it, which actually it, it prevents there being a big temperature difference between the on and the off. That's the reason it's there. So it's very important that you get these two cables connected round the right way. Otherwise, although the central heating system will work, there'll be a big temperature difference between the on and the off. As already explained, the grey cable of the motorised valve needs to be live when the central heating or the hot water is cooling for heat. For my grey, I've just gone to a permanent life, which is, which is fine, it'll work perfectly well. You could also, if you wanted to, of course, for the hot water two-port valve, just connect it to the on of the programmer. So when the programmer is cooling for, for uh, heat for the hot water, the grey becomes live. The same would apply to the central heating. I've got a permanent live to my grey, but of course I could, if I wanted to, connect it to the same connection as the on terminal for the programmer. Whichever way you do it, it's still going to work. The choice of, of how you do it is entirely down to you.